So here we are, sitting on a boat at Burden Pool, as you do. This was the first marina in the country. And we're within view of Goodwood Racecourse. So what is it about coming down here that is so special for all of you? For me, it's obviously the racing. You know, it wasn't the locality that brought us here. It was the racing that brought us here. And, and Goodwood is a magnificent track. It's a fantastic track to, to watch racing at. But the more we've come, the more I do get to know the area and uh, get out and see a little bit of it. And it is a beautiful corner of England, you can't deny that. And also can't deny that the weather tends to be a bit better down here than it is at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's a good time of year. You know, the boys were always on holiday. So we 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 found the boys could come with us. If we stayed here for the week, we'd come and make it a, a working holiday for the week. And the weather was good and we had lots of winners. And so it's we've been coming here probably 15, 16 years now. How often do the four of you ever get together now? Today's a good example. <laughs> They've come from home, I've come from Newmarket, and he's come from Polo, so it's not often you get us all in the same place at the same time. <laughs> we are, you know, very big into family and, and friends. Yeah, I think, I think, well, just yeah. think that on my iPad, I've got that photograph of the Dalmunzi Castle. Yeah, well, that's the whole... 45 of our relations all sitting around because we took a house at Christmas and that's that's probably the biggest family gathering we've ever had. And, and then our but we're sober quite in, wedding. Yeah, we're quite into those sort of things, having family parties and yeah. things. I have to be honest, Mark, I never realised you were such a keen cyclist. I Probably the worst kind of cyclist, the most dangerous for my health because I go through long periods of never sitting on it and then I have some crazy cycle planned and... I then go mad for four weeks or something, trying to get half fit to go and do it. So, so that's your escape, Mark. Deidre, would I be right in thinking that for you, that the escape from the world of racing is eventing? Yep, eventing um, and hunting in the winter. I've homebred horses this year. I've been competing on a, a five-year-old that I bred, um, and he's been tremendous. And I was seventh in the grassroots um, at badminton. Um, on my more established horse. And as your dress suggests, Angus, your thing is polo. Yeah, this is my passion. I picked it up when I was 12, just on a, what we call a fluffy in the polo community, a pony that's not made for polo. Um, so I did it on the same pony that I did jumping and pony racing and everything else on. Um, and then two seasons ago, I got my first couple of horses and I've spent my whole summers doing polo now ever since. And you're also a musician. I am, yeah. I've um, been in a band for 12 months now with um, a couple of school friends. And um, we now do a lot of pub gigs and we've been booked for two weddings now, which is very exciting for us. So. Ultimately, if, if I gave you a choice right now, polo or music? Definitely music on the basis that I could make enough money to then sustain the polo. Very good. <laughs> That's very good. Now, I have to say, Charlie, I was quite surprised to see you as a guest on the morning line on Saturday because I am sure that your father had spent most of the week saying you shouldn't be doing that, you should be doing your veterinary studies. Well, I thought that was, yeah, it was a bit of an ironic few days and that it was in the paper on Thursday that he thought I should not be in the paper at all in a vet school. And then on Saturday, they, they, you rang him up to do the morning line and he sent me to do it, so <laughs> can't have it both ways. Exactly. And explain what stage you're at with your veterinary studies. Uh, I'm going into fourth year, um, again, if I'm actually honest. <laughs> Just, again? You're doing again, the fourth year again? Fourth right. year again, sadly. Um, so I've still got two more years to go up there, but um, getting through it, through it slowly, slowly but surely. What do you guys remember, all of you, about Double Trigger and, and the moment that he won the Goodwood Cup for the first time, or indeed the moment he won it for the third time. I just saw they were replaying uh, races um, the other day, and they showed the double trigger and double eclipse, his full brother, first and second in the Goodwood Cup. And that is still, I mean, I think about it now, and it, it, it makes my eyes water. It just, you know, you hear my voice wobbling. It was just so momentous to us. And I think they're still the only full sibling to be first and second in a group race. The two brothers are fighting it out. Double Eclipse on the near side. Double Trigger on the far side. It's going to be close. Double Trigger is just lengthening as they come to the line. It's going to be a photo, but Double Trigger's won it from Double Eclipse. I remember that roar that he got after his third win. It was just amazing, and it was lift-off. Do you think his popularity was down to the way he raced, his bravery, or the way he looked, or a bit of both? Yeah, the, the stories abound about this horse, right back to the day we bought him. Uh, and uh, Ron Huggins said to me, come and see this, we're going to buy this horse and call it Trigger. And <laughs> he decided that before he ever bought the horse, and all because of the, the flashy looks, and uh, he couldn't get the name Trigger, and he had the horse double blue at the time, and 
so called him Double Trigger.